Where can a sailor in shorts or bikini and the warm sunshine sail past elephant, buffalo, impala, waterbuck and hippo? Where is it usual to moor within sight of wild animals? Where can one fall asleep to the lullaby of chirping crickets and frogs under the light of the moon and stars? Where can fishermen be thrilled by the roar of marauding lion? Where are the sunsets so magnificent and the dawn so inspiring? Kariba, of course. Kariba. When built, Lake Kariba was the largest man-made lake in the world. The lake, formed by the dam wall, 281 km long, 32 km across at its widest point, and covering 5,000 square km, is now one of Zimbabwe's major tourist attractions. Tourism, however, was far from the minds of those who in 1950 pointed out that the growing demands for coal by existing thermal power stations in Central Africa could not be met after 1960 by the railway system. A source of hydroelectric power would have to be found. The largest river in Central Africa, the Zambezi, seemed the obvious source of water and the Kariba Gorge met all the criteria for a dam wall. In December 1958, the dam was completed and the lake started to fill up over a period of five years. During this time, small islands were formed by the rising water, trapping more than 6,000 wild animals of all sizes. The game department set out to rescue these animals and Operation Noah was set in motion. This proved to be a mammoth task and by the end of 1959, over 6,000 animals, including elephant, buck, rhino, lion, leopard, zebra, snakes and numerous smaller animals and birds had been rescued. The local Batonka tribe, who also had to be resettled, believes their river god, Nayami Nayami, half serpent, half fish, would one day revenge the damning of the mighty Zambezi. Situated right on the lake shore, overlooking the vastness of Lake Kariba, is Caribbean Bay Sun. This Sardinian style hotel, with its sprawling buildings and evergreen gardens, is reminiscent of a Mediterranean resort, with facilities and entertainment for the whole family. Situated in a wildlife area on the Kariba Lake Shore, opposite Zebra Island, the Katisak Hotel offers spectacular views of the lake, islands and Matusadona Mountains. Situated on the shores of Lake Kariba, Mopani Bay Camping and Caravan Park is an exclusively beautiful site. It's an experience of a lifetime staying at Mupani Bay, enshrined by the cool and constant breeze from Lake Kariba. The camping and caravan park is situated within a forest of indigenous Mupani trees, which provides a lot of shade. Wildlife, especially elephants and buffalo, sometimes roam around the camp, making it even more fascinating. Just before entering the town of Kariba, you travel through the Charara Safari area. A beautiful campsite that is run by the Department of National Parks is set on the lake shore. This quiet site boasts neat, shady camping spots and ablution facilities. At the town of Makuti, situated high on the Zambezi escarpment, you need to fill up your tanks, as there is no petrol or diesel available in Manapul's national park. 
this is also a good time to do some last minute shopping or to enjoy an ice cold beer at a hotel. Sixteen kilometer from Akuti, on your way to Zambia, you will reach the National Park Office, situated at Morongora. All visitors to the Zambezi Valley must obtain an entry permit here. You won't be allowed into the reserve without it. The view onto the Zambezi Valley from the top of the escarpment is magnificent, and on a clear day you can see forever. Descending the winding pass to the foot of the escarpment, you reach the turn off to Manapuls, 16 km from Morongora, where you obtained your permit. Turn right onto the gravel road. The distance to Nayamepi camp and the reception office is 72 kilometers and could take up to two hours to reach. Although most types of vehicles can negotiate most of the roads in the park, care should be taken, especially at the sandy river crossings. The 220,000 hectare Manapools National Park lies in the north of Zimbabwe, between the Rukumechi and Sapi rivers. The Zambezi River forms the northern boundary and the Zambezi Escarpment the southern. Huge herds of elephant and buffalo occur in the park and lion, waterbuck, zebra and impala are plentiful. Nearly 400 species of bird have been recorded in the area. Open in the dry months from May to October, Manapuls is one of the most untamed areas of the country and tourists is still allowed to walk away from his vehicle through tall open forest of mahogany and acacia. Elephant and lion are common residents, so walkers need to be alert.
the Zambezi Valley is one of the low-lying areas of the country with very high temperatures in the summer. The best times to visit are the late winter or spring months when the temperatures are milder. During the dry winter months, the animals concentrate around the water holes and the banks of the Zambezi. The felt is dry and brown with little or no grass. When the rain comes, normally in early November, the land is suddenly transformed into a green haven. The flat plains become carpeted with lush green grass. The whole area resembles an enormous park. During this time, the large pools along the banks of the river, which gave the area its name, fills up from the heavy rains. Nayamepi camp is 4 hectare in extent and has a total of 29 camping sites. The camp is set on the banks of the Zambezi River and campers can enjoy a magnificent view of the Lower Zambezi National Park and the mountains across the river into Zambia. Shady campsites are set well apart that will leave you with a feeling of solitude even when the camp is full. Watch out for baboons and monkeys whose only mission seems to be raiding campsites during the day. During the night, be on the alert for scavengers like hyena. Don't leave any food or cooking utensils outside. Lock it up in your vehicle. Hippo might wander into the camp at night and surprise you. It could be a very unpleasant and tragic surprise, as it is claimed to be the most dangerous animal in Africa. At the entrance to the camp, firewood is provided in limited quantities and must be purchased. Collecting of firewood from the felt is prohibited and visitors are urged to take their own gas stoves. The camp has four ablution blocks with hot and cold showers, bath and flush toilets. As the camp is not fenced, you could be surprised by occasional visits from buffalo, elephant and even lion. 
Be aware, even if they seem to be tame, all animals are unpredictable and can be very dangerous. Fishing is permitted, but there is a limit of six fish per day. The Zambezi is renowned for its tiger fish, and Manapools is the ideal place to catch this monster of the deep. While fishing, you must constantly be aware of the presence of hippo and crocodile. Canoes are available for hire on a half day or full day basis. Canoeists must always be aware of the presence of hippo and crocodile and other dangerous game and avoid paddling too close to them. Inquire at the reception office for more information. There are two large lodges situated a short distance upstream from Nyamepi camp, each designed to accommodate up to eight persons. The lodges are self-contained and fully equipped with furniture, all bedding, towels, cooking utensils, cutlery and crockery. Cooking is by gas stove and there is a gas fridge freezer in each lodge. Visitors should make sure all doors are locked when they are not in the lodge to prevent access by baboons and monkeys. Sitting on a veranda, you can admire the unspoiled beauty of the river as it winds its way through the valley. The best way to spend your time at mana pools is to enjoy being alive and a part of the natural environment. You can do this by simply sitting on the bank of the Zambezi and watching nature happen around you.
take a picnic lunch and park at one of the pools, especially giant pool or long pool, and relax while all manner of creatures come to drink. You could take a walk to explore the vegetation and see if you can develop an understanding of some of the relationships among the animals and plants. A walk along Giant Pool or from Giant Pool to New Kupi, if your bush navigation is good, takes you among the tall and shady apple ring acacias. You should watch out for lion in this area, but the bush is quite open and relatively safe. Walking along Long Pool is also beautiful, but a bit more risky, since there is a lot of thick bush. A walk along the river bank from Nyamepi Camp to New Kupi Camp and the Mbera River is highly recommended, but do not stray into tall grass or bush and keep a sharp eye out for buffalo in this area. There is no place better equipped to put you in touch with your primal nature than mana pools. Here you will experience the true African wilderness with no protective fences, no guides and no defenses. If this thought frightens you, mana pools is not for you. If it excites you, you will have the holiday of a lifetime.
Kariba is once again our departure point for our next destination, the Matusadona National Park. Kariba Ferries operates a ferry service across the lake on their two car ferries, the Sea Lion and the Sea Horse. The 280 km trip across the lake takes approximately 24 hours. It has two departure points, one from Kariba itself at the eastern end and the other from Lebisi at the western end. The government-run DDF, which stands for District Development Fund, Shipping Service Ferry operates scheduled ferry trips to various destinations on the lake. The best way to reach Matusadona is to charter a ferry from DDF. This 50 km trip can take between 3 and 5 hours depending on the weather. Normally by road, the park is reached via Karoi. 8 km north of Karoi, on the Harari Lusaka road, then left through the Urungwe communal land. 115 km from Karoi, the Sanyati River is crossed. Continue on along the Binga Road for a further 62 km and then turn right and continue on for 82 km to Tashinga, which is the headquarters for the park. From Kariba, this route is more than 400 km long and can take up to a full day to cover. From Karoi, the roads are either gravel or dirt. The last 80 km is rough and not suitable for saloon cars. And during the rainy season, the road could be impassable even in 4x4 vehicles. The trip on the ferry is more enjoyable though. You can sit back and relax while you ease your way out over the lake. As you leave Kariba behind, small islands appear on the horizon as the captain skillfully maneuvers the craft on its route.
dozens of houseboats and other smaller craft are encountered on your way. No wonder Kariba is known as Zimbabwe's Riviera. Lake Kariba is recognized by many as the tourist paradise of Zimbabwe. It is 280 km in length and support a large population of people and animals along the shoreline. A wide range of activities are on offer to the visitor. Game viewing, boating, sailing, water skiing, scuba diving and houseboat cruises. But it is fishing that is probably the most sought after activity, particularly the fighting tiger fish. Wildlife in the area is prolific and elephant and buffalo are common sights along the shoreline. Other species which one can see are impala, waterbuck, zebra and sable. Bird life is varied and includes many water birds such as herons and egrets as well as a large number of fish eagles. Visitors can also hire one of the many houseboats available at Kariba. This is the ideal fishing holiday cruising slowly up and down the lake, stopping to fish at will and enjoying the spectacular sunsets whilst the captain carefully moors the boat for the evening. The Matusa Donna National Park lies along the southern shores of the lake and the Department of National Parks provides several campsites within the park. In addition, there are many top quality safari operators in this area, offering small exclusive camps staffed with professional guides to take visitors on game drives, walking or fishing. The Matusa Donna National Park is situated on the shores of Lake Kariba, between the Umi and Sanyati rivers. It covers an area of 1,407 square kilometer, of which only a third is provided with roads for visitors. The other two thirds consist of very wild, rugged and inaccessible country. The park has a beautiful shady camping ground at Tashinga on the lake shore. Some of the campsites boast sleeping and dining shelters. Firewood and dry facilities are available.
is an ablution block with hot and cold water, showers, toilets, wash basins and baths. For the adventurers, canoes are available for hire to explore some of the lake shores. Umi and Mbabala are exclusive camps. Each consists of two family units, containing two bedrooms and a bathroom. There is a central dining room and kitchen, with stove, storeroom and a fridge. The units have basic furniture, linen, crockery and cutlery, and cooking utensils. Cooking is by wood stove and lighting is solar powered. The camps are available for 6 day periods, Monday to Sunday, and a maximum of 12 persons are allowed. Free fishing throughout the year in the lake is allowed. Tiger, bream and wundu provide good sport, but a word of warning, Look out for crocodiles when standing on the water's edge and avoid swimming in shallow shoreline areas. Matusa Dona once had the largest black rhino population in Zimbabwe. Today, many of their shattered skulls are lined up like white tombstones along the road in the jetty safari area. Dismal reminders of poachers who shot their way through the area in the 70s and 80s. What a sad end for these creatures, which with huge effort were saved from the rising waters in Operation Noah.
Matusatona is now an intensive protection zone. As the small number of remaining rhino are successfully protected day and night by parksport personnel. Newly introduced young rhino are kept overnight in Bormas under the watchful eyes of armed guards. Still being babies, they need to be fed twice a day with a nutritious milk formula, mama style. Then they are off to explore their new and safe territory, accompanied by an armed scout complete with two-way radio who will protect them with his life. Visitors are allowed to get out of their cars and view game on foot, but this is done at their own risk. Wild animals are dangerous and unpredictable. Elephant, buffalo, impala, kudu and waterbuck are plentiful, whilst rhino, lion, sable, eland and zebra are frequently seen. Escorted walks with a game scout are possible, subject to availability of staff at the time. The colors of an African sunset over water will provide spectacular memories of Lake Kariba and the unspoiled beauty of Matusadona. The way to Chisarira, our next destination, lay up the Tashinga Road through the almost Aboriginal Batonka tribal area. But first, you had to get out of the park. The 82 km stretch of road over the Matusadona Mountains before you join the Karoi Binga Road is rough and not suitable for saloon cars. 
even in 4x4 the road can be a tester. During the rainy season, some of the bridges are washed away and can defy all driving skills. During heavy rains, the road might be impassable. It is advisable to inquire about the condition of the road before starting your journey. From Matusodona, the mountains that form the escarpment resembles a barrier, and barrier is in fact what Chisarira means. Chisarira National Park straddles the Zambezi escarpment at its highest point, a journey of about 200 km from Tashinga. It will take you more than half a day to reach the park headquarters. It is a fascinating drive through the Umi, Sengwa and Lusi Lukulu river valleys before climbing the steep side of the escarpment. The 20 km spectacular twisting climb up the geological step of Chisarira to the park headquarters is rough and 4x4 are essential, especially during the wet season. Chisarira National Park is situated on the Zambezi Escarpment in the northwest part of Zimbabwe, overlooking the Great Zambezi Valley and the upper waters of Lake Kariba. A remote area of 192,000 hectares of wilderness country with magnificent gorges, plateau and flat plains, this national park is unique and in a class of its own. The area is relatively undeveloped and road conditions are rough within the park. There are six exclusive camping sites established at present, each of which is limited to one party of a maximum of 12 persons. Kashwishwi Bush Camp is situated on the upper reaches of the Lusi Lukulu River, 6 km from the park headquarters. 
This camp has the best facilities. Facilities consist of two sleeping shelters, one dining shelter with concrete table and benches, plus a braai area. The camp also boasts an ablution block, with flush toilet, shower and a kitchen area, all with hot water. Please note that water may not be available during the dry season. Mobola Bush Camp is situated on the Mucheni River, below the Mansituba Spring, 6 km from the park's headquarters. No shelters have been constructed at this camp as yet, and the only facilities are concrete table and bench. An ablution block with flush toilet, shower and basin, and kitchen area, all with hot water, now exist at Mabola. The Mucheni View campsite is situated on the verge of the escarpment overlooking the valley and in the distance Lake Kariba. Backpacking wilderness trails escorted by an experienced and armed officer of the department are run during the dry seasons within Chisarira. The trails are not readily available but with prior arrangement at station level, it can be arranged, ranging from a few hours duration to a few days, depending on visitors' needs. An armed game scout can be made available to escort visitors on daytime walks within the park. It should be noted that unaccompanied walking by visitors is not permitted. Cesarilla Lodge has been built on the top of a 3 km long escarpment with breathtaking views of the Zambezi Valley stretching out below. Directly below the complex is a freshwater spring where many species of game and birds can be seen. About 70 km from Cesarilla you reach the Binga Dead Crossing Road. With tar under your tyres, the 30 km to Binga is covered in only a few minutes, as the splendour of Lake Kariba once again unfolds in front of you. Binga has been identified as a growth point in a tourism triangle, which include Wangi and the Victoria Waterfalls. The Lodge is situated on the edge of Lake Kariba, where you can fill up your tank for the first time since leaving the town of Kariba. The marina is close by and boats can be launched here. It is also the departure point for many houseboats. Chilila is a secluded lakeside lodge, set amongst one of the largest nurseries in Zimbabwe. The thatched self-catering lodges are superb, with private splash pools and gardens, with clean facilities. As we reach the end of this part of our adventure, we couldn't find a better place to wash down the dust, quench our thirst and enjoy the delectable cuisine than Masumo River Lodge. Set high on the Masumo River, the lodge offers spectacular views of the river and lake. For the budget traveller, 
a small cozy camping area is laid out on the edge of the river, offering rustic showers and toilets enclosed by reeds. While enjoying the many facilities Masumu Lodge had to offer, we prepared ourselves for the next part of our adventure. Our new adventure will take us to the well-known Wangi National Park, then onto Vic Falls and the Zambezi National Park. We will then travel south to the Matobu Hills National Park near Bulawayo, then onto the Great Zimbabwe Monument, as well as the Eastern Highlands of Zimbabwe. We will end our adventure at the unique and spectacular Ganara Zoo National Park with its majestic and famous Jiloju Cliffs, situated in the southeastern low field of Zimbabwe.